Hi, Michael. Oh, are you literally in Times Square right now? What is happening? Yeah, I'm Times Square. I feel like you took me on a vacation, so I'm really take, excited. Yeah, I take it you're not in Times Square. No, I'm definitely in the office. <laughs> I saw Hamilton last night. That was my first Broadway show. Shut up. That's an amazing experience to watch Hamilton on Broadway. The, it was the, I mean, it was, I mean, I first off, if you're going to do that, uh, amateur night, Michael, like go read the freaking Wikipedia and have the synopsis where you go see the three hour thing. But the talent was just, it's, I mean, that's why I'm you hooked. go to Broadway. I mean, I'm obsessed. I'm a former theater kid and I'm obsessed with Broadway. I want to try to find a way to edit um, our logos somewhere on some of those screens somehow. How, would, how amazing would that be? <laughs> oh, like, yeah, like, like lead in, lead in media over there and read over night there. media. Well, so Michael, tell me in one or two sentences what it is that you do for a living and yep. we'll provide some context for some folks listening in on what the heck is happening. <laughs> yeah, sure. So when I'm not raising kids and I have four of them, I still say four kids, but three, two of them are like grown. One's out of the house, so I, but I'm going to play the four kids thing until the end. So the until last the one's out. So I write the last check. Um, when I'm not playing dad, I do two things professionally. I work with men uh, and coach them on specific issues, men's issues. Uh, that's more of a niche thing that I do. A core business is a digital marketing agency where we build brands on social media, websites, SEO. It's just a full stack digital agency. It started like being the LinkedIn guy and it's just evolved from there. Well, that's exactly why I wanted to bring you on our casual LinkedIn yeah. water cooler talk to there talk about that. Um, apparently, we're streaming live from Times Square. Times Michael Square, bringing yeah. in... <laughs> I couldn't just do like guns. a normal. Yeah, I couldn't just do like, all right, let's, let's do it from, from New Hampshire. I had to make it a big production. Now, this is so just, the, I didn't even put together the fact that I was going to be here with you scheduling the podcast. Like, you know what? I'm going to go down here and do it like this. I, I don't think yeah. you've had somebody do from Times Square. So this is a hell yeah. This is a hell yeah moment for me. And I love that because it's all about being in the moment, creating and being authentic. So for me, this is, this is right up my alley. And I get to meet people like you through podcasting and through LinkedIn, because it's something that real life every day, I would never be able to do. Like if we hadn't met online do, do you think we'd be having this kind of conversation right now no and by the way little housekeeping thing um i'm starting to cook half to death and i have no hair to stop the sweat so when i'm doing that I'm, I'm not a twitchy person well i'm kind of am um the, everything's falling out in the glasses you know at some point so if i keep okay. doing that it's it's not you a thing what? it's just a thing it's just the thing. And when we are by our water cooler today in the middle of New York, that's the kind yeah. of conversations that we're going to have. But right, let's, let's get go. into something that I wanted to touch on. What's yeah. something that you've learned in the past week that you're really excited about? I'll say what I, and I wrote about it in the last day, um, is the value of a life is just very difficult to quantify, measure, encapsulate in one journal entry, one conversation. I met this homeless woman, Jane. I'll just touch on her briefly. She's from Nigeria. She came here some 30 years ago. She's been homeless basically in Times Square for 20 years. Wow. Um, and she came here after her husband took his life. They have three kids. And her approach to um, that situation, that painful situation was to forgive him. Wow. The kids didn't do that. And so I could touch on it and go there, but um, that created a divide and, you know, the mental health stuff and depression and the loss and the grieving took her down a path that, that you know, her, her path and my path, you know, met literally two blocks north of here, or I think east of here. And um, we talked for an hour and just, I was, you know, beyond the, how does, you know, how does someone end up like this? And these questions like that we would normally have, it was more like, I'm just astounded by the level of wisdom and insight she had and finally just the book in that she didn't let me walk away empty-handed I mean she made it she made a point to say you know men in her way men carry a lot they think the whole world is on their shoulders they have to you know make the money and look 
you know, strong and never yeah. admit weakness and never get help. And it was just really amazing to engage with someone so, so wise it, it, from a, from a really tough position of loss. And I think that's so em- empowering for you because it gives you a different perspective on the work that you do with the men that you coach. It's like oh. something that you can take with you. I mean, I don't even know, like that's, it's very, I would like have to sit down and journal about that after that seems really impactful. I journaled that whole night. I came home, I came back to the room and I cried my eyes out. And then, I, you know, I just, I just put out one piece of the experience um, because the rest of it, I, I sort of vaulted. I, I journaled for a few hours. There's, there's yeah. so much to take away from it. It was a one hour conversation. I'm still processing. I think there's so many men um, in the day-to-day grind of work and business that really don't feel comfortable sharing that they're going through a tough time because there's so many expectations and society hasn't done a very good job at giving them the space to be comfortable in order to express those needs and those uh, fears or whatever it is that they're experiencing, it, which is interesting um, to, to think because you would think at this point and where we are in life that that wouldn't be the case, but I'm sure you've worked with a lot like what, what is the common thing that you hear from a, across the board from all the men that you try to help that they struggle with? They have in general, well, no, more specifically, they typically have not learned to do one of two things, if not both. Number one, understand what's happening in here and connect whatever that is, which they don't know. They don't know how to understand what's happening on the inside. And then number two, how to connect the distance between here to here mm. and articulate it in a meaningful way to sustain, to create and sustain intimacy or meaningful relationships. They just, it's not something you learn typically until you're in a therapy, you know, with a therapist, you know, looking at some type of getting fired or loss or marriage, you know, divorce. I mean, it's just, you don't learn that. You're right. Because even uh, for everyone, not just men, we are not taught in school how to properly communicate our emotions or what our emotions even mean. So right. and you're right. Until we go to therapy or we meet a coach like you to help us understand that, we're just kind of right. like floating around like emotionless amoebas in the world. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I'm just, this is a the dream of a reach. I, I think the tides are turning in certain circles. Yes. Uh, I think we're a long way away from it being something meaningful, at least in the U.S., where we could somehow infiltrate appropriately and positively infiltrate our already terrible educational system. Um, there's goods and put, good, goods and bad parts of that, but just terrible in the sense that you can't, it's, it's not open for change. Right. And the change needs to be is to teach not just young boys, but young girls how Everyone. to understand what's yeah. happening here and communicate it in meaningful ways. If we all just understood how to communicate what we're thinking and feeling, I mean, I feel like the word world would be a better place. Yeah. And not only that, when somebody does, how to receive that information to make them feel heard and validated how as a result. How to honor, how to honor, how to honor it. How to prefer honor is I prefer you over my opinion. Honor, honor. And you know, I, I certainly have a hundred million stories, not quite. I got a, my share of stories of that failure. So that's yeah, funny. that's such yeah. a powerful wow. Like I was like not expecting such a cool lesson learned from where I mean, yeah. it, you really you really you really you know that's gave me some great perspective on that. Um for me, what I've learned in this past week is that um I'm just getting started and the work that I'm doing and that's okay. So yeah. I'm 27 and all the work that I'm doing, I I feel like I'm behind or I'm not doing enough or I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, but somebody was just reminding me the other day that it's okay and like you're probably ahead of most people in your age group. So just to give myself some more grace and uh for the work that I'm doing day to day. Well, if I can say, I would encourage you, but anyone listening to this that's in that situation, whether you're 27 or 47 or 67, you know, I'll speak for myself. When I was 27, from 27 to 40, 41, I, I ran, ran, ran through life. I saw two broken marriages, the loss of a child. I was fired three times from high school and I was laid off once. You know, the amount of losses in that amount of time um, had a lot to do with got to get there, got to get there. I'm behind look at everybody else, the, the spirit and attitude of comparison. And so what I tell people is, you know, you can, you can, co- you know, 
you can buy into that or you can cooperate with the statement that says you're on time. You're yeah. where you're supposed to be right now and, and, and constantly get better every day. There's nothing wrong with wanting better, but when it chase, when it drives you like it drove me into situations that I probably could have otherwise had a positive influence and control over, it's not a good thing. It's how you break, it's how you break people. It's how you blow up relationships. I love that you said that because that's what I'm trying to do really a lot better at is looking around and being grateful and mindful of what I have now and, and accepting that it's ex everything is as it should be, um, which is a great transition into, you know, my daily gratitude practice. So before I, I think about it, I want to ask you, what are you grateful for today, Michael? I'm grateful that I'm down here in Times Square and I have the ability to, hey man, come here. That, that I have the ability. Take care. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks for your service too. Thank you. <laughs> you got it, brother. Take care. As a veteran. Here. Did I did I have yeah, that I have the um I mean <laughs> I was texting a friend of mine. I got this it's too hard to answer. To simplify, like, man, I, I get to um take time. You know, last week was a really tough week for me. And I just made the decision to get away. The last time I came to New York, no one even knew about it. My kids knew, but that was about it. Mm -hmm. And I came down here for like three or four days and I wrote 700 journals, which was insane. I mean, I didn't wow. see anybody. I didn't go to a show. I just came down here. And I was that guy at Starbucks that sat down at the end of the thing and wrote, you know, the, the one they yeah. call a psycho. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no. So the, I would say Ernest you know I mean? Hemingway. Let's not say psycho. <laughs> Let's Whatever, like, no, I love that meme. It. It's like, hey, the guy at the end of the bar kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's totally me. And I'm, I love it. I got the headphones and I got Sam Smith playing or Louis Capaldi. God knows what I'm listening to. But I think the gratitude around just my senses, mm. uh, the basics, man, the basics of life that so many people are struggling to not just get but retain. Uh, and I have it in abundance and I get to, to you know, when God brings people into my life, uh, I get to let I, I get the cascade that I'm, I'm struggling with this work because I'm so grateful right now yeah. so I don't know that's it that's the short answer you don't want the long answer you'll be here for days no well you know what what I'm at least hearing is that you're in a good place in life and you're able to look around and see all yeah. the gifts that God has given you and you're just like thanks man what's up man, yeah, man. I see you up there <laughs> appreciate like, it I see you I see you here uh it's divine appointments and then i'm then i'm then i know he's saying hey i see you i see what you just did nobody else yeah. saw but i see you i love that yeah that's beautiful i mean i'm in a similar boat i'm just grateful for the the fact that you know i was laid off in march and right now we're in july and i've been able to go a very non-traditional route of getting myself back up and starting my business and um to be able to pay my bills, you know, maybe I'm not like bringing in six figures, but like I'm paying my own bills and I'm living life um, in a in a way that I have not ever dreamed of. And for me, that's that's another. I guess that's a god thing for me too. I'll I'll, I'll put it there. It's not I'll something I plan to do. <laughs> yeah, it happens. when, when Sonia and I started what's now the the, the agency we go and she started it from Serbia. I was doing my own thing, and then we put it together in 2019. I mean, I went into that season with I had a, an offer letter to go back into an industry that I hated that would have taken me away from my kids my why why I felt like God led me away from it and it was security mm -hmm. I had that in one hand and I had the possibility of being an entrepreneur and about six dollars in my checking account literally like either that or ask for loans and default God knows what and I took a risk and it, it's just, uh, I can talk a lot about that, but just encourage you, you're, you're, you're on the right path. That's beautiful. I think, well. I, I think everyone needs to hear that right now because yeah. every, it's yeah. a very difficult time and many do not want to take a risk in a, in a season where, you know, we might, we either are, or might be in a recession, yeah. taking a risk seems like the farthest rational possible thing to do, but sometimes it's not what we think we should do is the right thing but it's what we don't even realize could like might be the right thing to do even if it doesn't seem like it it's just i don't know how to explain that do you have a yeah. better way to to explain that <laughs> well just to, well just to, you know mom was a little bit different i mean 
I could have stayed. I mean, I could have, it was, it, it was the industrial laundry business, the uniform rental business. I mean, you're talking yeah. about an example of the Ottoman Empire. I mean, it's like, it's, it's never going to die. I mean, that yeah. thing took for, that took a million years to die, right? Like it's, it's much like that. And so security, um, I was good at it, you know, had a reputation, you know, whatever. And, but I realized when I walked away, not only did I walk away from the toxic situation, that's a separate part of the story, but I never really wanted to be a leader with a bunch of reports and manager yeah. and all that. I mean, I excelled at it, but I've really enjoyed being a, initially a solopreneur. And, and I, I don't even like saying that. And then an entrepreneur, I was a reluctant version of both of those, but that's more who I was when I was a director of X or uh, operations leader, yeah. et, cetera, et cetera, for the last 25 years. So I, that's a long preface to say that sometimes it takes extreme loss and pain, not just to evolve to where we want to go, but for, for that direction to be affirmed in ways that we wouldn't see until the other side of the loss. Like, oh, you should be an entrepreneur, Rita. Oh, Michael, you should be this. And you know it, you know it, you know it. But it's not until some sense of security or complacency chip you've got that you stand on is ripped out of your hands do you realize what you've been missing out on this whole time well I don't know said. if I can say it any better that was, than that. that was perfectly <laughs> said I mean essentially when we want to change it doesn't happen from a place of comfort or complacency no. it only happens happens psychologically from two places either from extreme loss or the desire for extreme pleasure. Those two extremes right. are the only ways that we go and want to like do something with our little lizard brains that we have. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Okay, so what are you looking forward to this upcoming week? Um, well, tonight I'm gonna go, so next next week, I'll, okay, so I've been doing a lot of traveling. So next week I'm looking forward to getting back to actual consistent work. Yeah. Um, because I have a team that is expecting that of me. And, you know, we, we, we sort of all, uh, we've expanded and grown and, and, you know, people are counting on me. You know, it's okay. We got the travel thing, Michael. Kind of like do um, my job or something. You got to do my job, you know, to pay for all this stuff. So, um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, you know, two, two things. One, I'm, I'm in the week, like there's enough, there's another couple of days here. And I know there's a couple of other sort of, experiences people I haven't met that I'm going to meet that are going to impact the writing. Um, yeah. You know, I just finished, I just hit 14,500 journals uh, this week. And that's Ooh. since the sum, that's the, since the summer of 2014. And so I'm really proud about that because it's, it's starting to become bigger and bigger in terms of how I feel like what I believe that God is going to do with it. Mm. Uh, from there, I'm excited about that. And then, you know, back, just back with family and just having a chance to, I guess, decompress of, of the experiences here. And then I get ready to, in, uh, for September to go to Serbia and meet the rest, you know, s some of our team members, our, our, our core teams in Nova Sad. Uh, so I'm going to go and visit there for about two, two and a half weeks. That's an amazing experience. Also, Serbia, yeah. I heard, is gorgeous. So it's oh, going to be a win-win situation either yeah. way, whatever. You I've been do. one time. I've been one time, and I was overwhelmed. It was right after. It was right in that thing of, am I going to jump in the water and do this entrepreneurial thing, or am I going to, you know, and I was, I don't, I was not. I wasn't as engaged in the experiences as I, as I will be this time. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm really looking forward to hearing how that trip goes and that experience is like for you. I'm like, um, you got the. <laughs> I need like a raincoat. You need like a little raincoat. I'll give you some of my hair. I'm over it. No, here. it reminds Take me. It. What is that show? Remember that? Remember that airplane where the pilots start to sweat? What are those show, like? What are those shows? I'm trying to think of the comedy where the guys starting to sweat. Um, God, what's it? It's just, you know, it's, just, it's like Steve Carell or I can't, I, I can't place it. the whole time I've been I thinking of that movie. I have no idea what you're talking about. Someone that really sees this is going to be like, oh, you know that movie? You're like, yeah, I'm like starting to sweat everywhere. You probably, if you're, if you're listening to this and you know, please let us know what, um, I'm going to think about it the minute we're to get off. But. <laughs> All right. So before we round out this conversation, yep. I have to ask, you know, you are the LinkedIn guy. So I'm a LinkedIn guy. The A, whatever, whatever. Um, same a. Thing. You're you're definitely really involved on LinkedIn. And for someone just starting out on the platform, you know, they have dreams like we've talked about. They're trying to break out. 
what advice do you have for them? I mean, number one thing I think most people say before you get to tactics and how to use the platform is just be clear about your purpose. You know, when I started back on LinkedIn, well, I got on LinkedIn in 09 to find a job and then I didn't really care about it until 2017. I got back on to find another job, you know, and along the way, it was a place to find talent, uh, find a job and read an interesting Forbes article. Obviously on this side of them being acquired in 2016, it became a, it, it became a different place. Well, in 2017, it's considered by lots of people like the golden year because they were handing out virality to anybody with anything, right? I mean, I remember, this is no joke, but I remember when a bad day on, on the platform was anything less than 100,000 views on a post. It was extremely, extremely easy to get reached. And so because of that, I didn't, I was looking for a job. I wasn't right. trying to build a business. I was trying to put my voice out there talking about leadership. And then I started talking about men's issues and mental health. I was just aimless. And yeah, I built a following and people that are, I guess, loyal to my message and some that left and that's okay too. Yeah. I didn't really have anything from 2017 to 2019 and I'm building a business and th that I wouldn't recommend mm -hmm. because today I would talk about mental health. Tomorrow I'm talking about leadership. After that, I'm talking about sales. I mean, what does this guy do? That's not a real effective way to build a business, but I wasn't trying to build. One. If you're right. trying to build a business on LinkedIn and you're talking about 10 different things, you're going to have a very confused audience. At the end of the day, it's important to remember that most people, including me, just consume content. Right. So your prospect, your potential prospects are, con are not going to engage your content as much as they're going to consume it, probably 10 to 1. So you have a lot. When you get 1,000 views on a post, that doesn't seem like a lot, but you only need three of the mm -hmm. right people. And if the you're right not communicating, people. that's right. If you're not, you're not communicating a clear message, you're going to have a confused audience. Um, especially if you're in a commoditized space, like, like let's take marketing. I mean, there's a marketer behind every tree, right? I mean, and, <laughs> we're all up here right? like, hello, hello. <laughs> and, in, and in some cases under every rock, I mean, I'm, I hate to be that way, but it's, it's true. Yeah. That being said, uh, two things to bring this together, be clear about your message and about your, dip, your, how different you are. And more importantly, and people don't talk about this LinkedIn experts don't talk about, you got to be connecting with the right people. This idea that you're going to put out this amazing content and people just show up and money comes out of nowhere, that's not the way it works. You've got to be sending connection requests the right way, A-B testing, trying things. You've got to be bringing people into the audience because LinkedIn is a channel. It's a YouTube channel, whatever you want to say. So you get the best content and no butts in the seats to consume it. You're, it's it's an audience of one. Yeah, it's a lot of, you're, you're learning a craft on the content side, but it's an audience of one. Right. So two things. One, be clear about your purpose and niche that down as best you can. Don't be like me and go all over the place. And secondly, be connecting with the right audience members and prospects because they're out there. And the third thing I'd say is don't believe this nonsense that people don't want to do business on LinkedIn. All right. Direct messaging outreach works. There's only three ways to use LinkedIn. Only three. Content marketing, uh, paid ads, and direct messaging outreach. If you're an entrepreneur, what else is there? There's not 50. There's 50,000 yeah. ways to do all three. That's true. There's only three, <laughs> there's only three clubs in the bag. Direct messaging, outreach, paid ads, and content marketing. So get good at all of them. Well, and if you don't, just uh, hit up Michael. He can help hit me you. Hit me up. <laughs> we'll help you up, and I'll, I'll drop it down. I'll drop it like that for you. <laughs> and in the meantime, if you do get niche down on whatever it is you want to do, and Michael does an amazing job promoting it, and you want a podcast, hit me up. <laughs> Win-win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. Well, okay, Michael, before uh, we wrap up this conversation, I, I just really want to thank you for coming on here. We provided a lot of value. We talked about mental health. We talked about entrepreneurial, uh, men, like mental health in a way too, and the journey of and encouragement for that. And we sprinkled in some discussions around LinkedIn and the best practices um, is there anything that I didn't ask you today that you wish I would have asked you and that you'd like to talk about? Uh, only you want to come join this party we're starting up behind me? I would love That's to. Oh, <laughs> well, she just said that he walked away. Uh, no, I think we covered it. Thanks for having Fantastic. me. This is terrific. When you when you booked with me, I didn't know what we were talking about. I didn't know if we were pitching to you or what. And I was like, what a what a pleasant surprise. I I don't think I've done a podcast in over a year. So this is great. Well, I'm glad that I was the one that we got to have this conversation yeah. with together. Well, Times Square. And this freaking goes Times down. Square. This, this is, is going to be, this is going to go down in your thing. 
This is historical. I get, I'll just say like when people ask me, I, yeah, I've done a live podcast in Times Square. Not really, but it's fine. <laughs> Make sure you look down your nose with your overpriced I mean, like, latte. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, Michael, if anyone wants to reach out to you and ask you questions about LinkedIn or um, pick your brain about mental health, how can they how can they do that? There's two ways. I'm Michael David Chapman on LinkedIn or we are leadinmedia.net. Awesome. Well, this was LinkedIn Water Cooler Talk. I hope everyone has a great day and we'll catch you on the next one. Awesome. Thanks for having me.